I don't know where that came from. I just found it here in the house one day. Hmm. House ghost. I have a white scarf that appeared from nowhere once. Hmm. It spooks me out. Speaking of house ghost, if you'll recall, look what I found. Oh, hey, the long goodbye. The house ghost heard you complaining. I found it in the most ridiculous place possible. It had to have been put there by a ghost. It was in between records. What records? It was right next to suicidal tendencies. The ghost committed suicide. Oh, or tended to commit suicide. So anyway, long goodbye. I got it back. Hello to the long goodbye. Unboxing yo. Unboxing yo. Oi, unboxing. We are going to thank our donors. People will go to welcome to the basement show.com and contribute. And we're also going to open our mailbag. We got some mail today. Gonna to open it up. But first, our donors, Megan, who says, thanks for all the great reviews. Lindsay, Anthony, James, David, Abraham, Kempson, Stephanie, Brian, Grant, Catherine, Robert, Graham, Rebecca, Kendall, and Matthew, who says, have you guys ever watched Midnight Madness? Yes, we talked about it on our previous episode. And then we have Alexander, who says, thank you for countless hours of entertainment. Kyle, Kai, Sean, Dan, Maurizio, Corey, Jonathan, Danielle, Jacob, Lewis, Jeff, Austin, Jared, and Allison, who writes, thanks for making the show. Thank you for watching the show, Allison. Many of the things we get in our mailbag are records. A lot of people send me music that I've never heard before, and it broadens my horizons. But a lot of times, they'll send some old favorites, and that's what we're going to talk about today. First of all, we've got Johnny Thunders, So Alone. He looks alone. Look at that sad guy. You're never alone when you have copious amounts of heroin. Yes. And you can't put your arms around a memory. The best punk ballad ever written or recorded. Which is the thing I just said about memories and arms. Just a tragic career, because this guy was so talented. He was such a great guitar player, and he just couldn't get it together. Uh, next up, we've got Prince, Sign of the Times. This is a double album. This was released in the late 80s, and this is just a great big box of stuff that what? Prince gave us, and uh, stylistically, it's just all over the place. It's really him. I think this is the truest portrait of Prince as a person and as a musician. What are some of the tracks on this one? Well, it's got You've Got the Look, which was a hit. Oh, Could Never Take the Place of Your Man, which was a hit. And then it's got weird stuff like Starfish and Coffee, dance songs like Housequake. It's got love songs like Ever in My Life. It's just got, it's got everything. And it's got just Prince's weirdness fully on display. If I Was Your Girlfriend is a weird song. I didn't know there was a song called If I Was Your Girlfriend on that. And so you started the sentence and I'm like, where's this going? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we've got Led Zeppelin. No title. Commonly known as Four. Or as I call it, Guy with Six on Back. I remember the day that I listened to Led Zeppelin for the first time. Yes. It was not the first time that I'd heard them. It's the first time that I listened to them. And it's the first time that I recognized and reckoned with them as an entity. And that was a very good day. Just eight songs on this. Like Sign of the Times, they're all pretty much different from each other. And they're all just like these little polished jewels. Yes, different from each other. And yet, perfect examples of what Led Zeppelin is. Yeah. And I don't care what anybody says. I'll listen to Stairway to Heaven any day of the week. Postcards. This is Philippe. Greetings from Hamburg, Germany. Ah, guten Tag. This is from our buddy Nick C. in Colorado. Ah, guten Tag. Andrew, otherwise known as Aramis419, who took a trip to San Francisco. Ah, San Francisco. Here's Blake with a Kids in the Hall brain candy postcard. It says that that's one of his favorite movies. It's a movie you're a big fan of, right? I do, I like it. Yes. This is John from Yonkers, New York, who says he's been a fan since the first Welcome to the Basement show, which that's a deep cut, let me yes, tell you. Yes, yes it is. Oh, five out of six. I'm going to use my newest letter opener to open this letter. This is from Ryan in Philadelphia. Some drawings. Dear Matt and Craig, it's been a while since I wrote to you. I do apologize for my penmanship, despite how similar it is to Matt's handwriting. Anyway, I wanted to thank you for all the laughs and riffing you brought to the internet. Again, I'd like to shout out my friend Robert for introducing me to your show via, yes, you can probably guess it, Fritz the Cat, as well, the totally bonkers Holy Mountain. I want to say thanks for keeping my cinephile heart a burning. All right, and he's got two pictures. This is me and Craig in various garbs in various styles. Gets neat. Yeah, experimental drawings. Yeah. And now viewer questions. I'm going to take a question off of one of the cards we just received today. 
Philippe from Hamburg, Germany writes, what is your favorite punk movie? His is Beijing Punk. Well, my favorite, it's a cliche, but I have to go with Repo Man because the movie itself is punk. It follows punk themes and it's about a punk who's trying to grow up. Well, I have a question here, but first I'm going to read this comment from Luke Schwartz who says, I recently tried to do the cinema immersion tank with Francis Ha. I think that's a good candidate for the tank, even though I'm not a big fan of that movie. Oh, but I'm a huge fan of that movie. I did it twice, but on the third night, I got invited out with some friends. Much like Francis, I went out choosing to spend money I didn't really have. <laughs> Take some dedication to put aside seven hours of your life for one movie back to back to back. Well, someday you'll make it. I believe you can do it. I don't know if I'm ever going to do it, but you, you can do it. You sound a lot like Francis there. <laughs> And Jack the First writes, Will you ever do a special where you watch a really long movie? We kind of did that already. It was back in episode five, Paint Your Wagon. It's a long time to sit on the old leather couch. It and hurts. It, and it's a lot of footage to go through. After that experience, I capped the movies off at two hours 15. But I will say that there's one movie, I believe it's two hours and 45 minutes long, that I really want to watch for the show. And someday we might watch it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Goose, PJ, Powder Puff. That's BMX talk. Of course it is. When that kid turns sideways, he's nearly two-dimensional. <laughs> Fat boy eats his feelings. <laughs> grease lightning, go grease lightning. Once we trace the hideout, all we do is call the cops. Can you dig it? What do we want? <laughs> Whenever. Do you all know what to do? No. This is from Goodwill. Dear Matt and Craig, I don't know what this is other than it features a character named Carrot Top. I hope you like it. Yours, Joseph and Paula of the Netherlands. This is a book, Love of Seven Dolls. Large breasted uh, woman on the cover. Cool. And it's altogether moving. A vivid novel of the human hunger for love, says the Cleveland Press. This is a CD, it looks like. We have got a cat-shaped hole in my heart. Oh, no. Oh. This is going to be sad. <laughs> this is from Michael. I think these are songs about people who lost a cat. The royalties to this disc will be donated to the Treehouse No-Kill Cat Shelter. That's good. That's very nice. Thank you. And now I'm going to share with you another one of my Curb Your Enthusiasm spec plots. Ooh. Cheryl sends Larry on a very important errand to buy a gift for a friend's toddler's birthday party. Why do babies even have birthday parties? It's ridiculous. He's not a baby, he's a toddler. A toddler. A baby that walks. Larry dawdles and wastes time getting ice cream and trying on hats in a hat store. And he forgets the errand until the last minute and he gets to the store just as it closes. It's too late to find another toy store. But there's a pet store right next door that's still open. Larry buys the child a dog toy. The parents, of course, recognize that it's a dog toy and they are upset, but the kid loves it, ignoring the rest of his gifts and running around the house squeaking his new rubber pork chop. The parents have to keep telling the child to quit putting it in his mouth. <laughs> Somehow Larry and the kid end up alone and Larry tries to interact with him, asking him how much he likes his new toy and telling him that the rest of his gifts are okay, but not great. He ends up throwing the toy, and the kid runs and brings it back. <laughs> they do this several more times. Larry says, go on, go get it, boy. <laughs> he doesn't notice that the mother has walked into the room. <laughs> Are you playing fetch with my son? The horrified mother asks. Larry is asked to leave, and Cheryl is mortified. As they leave, the heartbroken child cries. The next week, they run across the mother and her son, and she has the kid on a leash. <laughs> when they start to walk, they just wander everywhere, don't they? Larry and Cheryl awkwardly pat the kid on top of his head and walk away. This needs uh, a, a scene of a... Go! Go! <laughs> <laughs> Just forget about me! Go! <laughs> Another letter from Philly here, and this is addressed to Matt and Courtney. I received an email from them about this, and I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> he thinks my name's Courtney? Oh, uh, this is a condolence card for Ernesto. I'm sorry that your friend is gone. Jay and Patricia, give us condolences. Now, Patricia... I believe it was Patricia who emailed me. She was very mortified. She said they sent this off really quick and they accidentally wrote Courtney on the envelope, which, of course, it's fine. And Courtney is Aaron Yonda's... Courtney's broken up about Ernesto, too, so, you know, it's perfectly appropriate. This one is from uh, Morricone and Messina. 
the Italian composer and Kenny Loggins' former partner. Well, this is... There you go. That's another... Uh, my heart is so heavy. <laughs> but I, I certainly do appreciate these. This is another condolence card. We're incredibly sorry for the loss of Ernesto. Our thoughts with you are with you and Cecil and the whole basement family. Love, Nata and Doug. Thanks, guys. Scruffy looking 1138 says, Hope you enjoy the comics my bros and I sent you. That would be the Bushido Blade of Zatoichi Walrus, issues one and two. And hope you do a Zatoichi report on them. Well, I don't have a hard ticket report this week, so now it's time for the Zatoichi report. My quest to consume every piece of media ever made (laughs) concerning the character Zatoichi continues in perpetuity. (laughs) To say this is not part of the Zatoichi canon is the understatement of the millennia. Yes, he seems to be a walrus. (laughs) That's right. Ichi Walrus does not live in Japan. He lives on a mythical island which rests on the back of a giant sea turtle. It's full of magic, fantastic creatures, and the gods that rule the island. And it has never been visited by humans. Until today. A young shipwrecked girl, Franny Goldstein, washes up on the shore. Ichi nurses her back to health, and she's welcome to stay on the island for the rest of her life, but she wants to go home. So Ichi pledges to take her back to her home with the help of a magical pearl. They get back to her parents' house, but during a celebratory homecoming dinner, the house is attacked by Chiu, master of the abyss, and his hellspawn ninja ducks. Can't help but notice the ducks on the cover there. They're after that pearl. Chiu steals the pearl and, for good measure, also kidnaps Franny's parents and takes them to hell. So that's a turn. Ichi Walrus vows revenge. This is from Soul Sin Comics, and it's actually pretty old. It's from 1986. As you can tell by some of the ads for their other comic titles, such as Reagan's Raiders. <laughs> they take over where Rambo left off. There's our President Reagan with uh, some sort of headband on, looking sweaty. Uh, looks like we got two more envelopes and two more packages. All so right. Let's do it. Colin in Winnipeg. Colin has drawn us some fan art. Here hey. we have a little uh, hard ticket to Hawaii. Snake! <laughs> I believe this is a drawing of Aaron Yanda and Baby Cookie. Oh. Oh, but dee 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 This is from Mark in Fulton, New York, who says, My girlfriend and I were able to see life-size replicas of the Nina and Pinta recently and decided to send these to you. So we have, see, this would be the Nina. This is the Pinta. That's life-size. They're actually this big. Those so, are photos. Oh, I see. That makes a lot more sense now. I thought that's why they needed a third boat. <laughs> so people could actually fit in it. So you ready for this, Matt? Normally it doesn't go this way. I lost my chance to pull up Brett Favre there. To packages. Packages. This is from Tommy in Hameen Lina. And it looks like Tommy wants to turn me into a metalhead. Because they sent me Metallica and Justice for All. Does this have Enter Sandman on it? Yes. Uh, no. No, this has One, which is also a good song. I also received a package from Tomi in Finland. Oh, cool. This is the movie Metallica used clips of in the video from the first music video, One, Johnny Got His Gun. Based on a novel by Dalton Trumbo. Yes, I love the song, I love the video, I love the book. I've never seen the movie. But also, there's another one in here. Setting you the second movie from the director of the Finnish Christmas classic Rare Exports. This would be Big Game with Samuel L. Jackson. Thank you for all your cards and letters and packages. It's really great, and it makes unboxing that much more fun and true to its name. We hope you have a good time. You can see the next episode of Welcome to the Basement this coming Friday. We'll see you then. Yes. And now this. I'm Stanley Kubrick. (laughs) I don't enjoy airplanes. I directed The Shining.